Hi, my name is Travis Walker, and um, as you can see, there's something different about my face. Um, I was diagnosed with Perry Romberg syndrome when I was 17, well, when I was 25 years old. At 17 years old, I noticed that my face had nothing. It looked like it had, somebody had beat me in the, side of, in the right side of my face, and from that point, I had become uh, a hermit, and go into the house and become recluse and we ended up gaining about a couple hundred pounds and I was pretty big then going back and forth to doctors because no doctor knew what was going on with me. They didn't know anything about Perry Romberg syndrome um, and why my face looked like it did. And um, from that point I would go for several years not knowing what was going on and staying depressed and staying suicidal in my head because I didn't want to live looking like I did and being um, being different. Um, at 25 years old, 25 or 26, I decided to get myself together and get out of the house and try to live some sort of life. Um, I guess one of the biggest things that you should know about me as well and the reason why it's so important that I discuss this part is because I'm gay, and and anyone knows that in the gay community, looks and appearances there is is everything, and so I didn't fit into the norm in the gay community. Um, so I spent several years alone, end up getting with someone who wanted to use me, and um, and I would allow that because I didn't look like everybody else, and I didn't think I deserved to be happy. I didn't think I deserved to be. Um, to to have what everybody else had, you know. Um, so at 26 years old, I would venture out into the world again and begin my my trying to begin some sort of life, or you know. And next thing I know, um, I got diagnosed with periorbic syndrome by going to a doctor and he referred me to a, a plastic surgeon specialist and he referred me to someone who dealt in craniofacial disorders and <clears throat> then I would um, would end up having going to go see this doctor and he told me that he would have me um, have both sides of my face asymmetrical he would do perform the surgery and um, it was a very, he was a renowned doctor who said that he had traveled over to across to make a uh, little smile foundation and all that and told me that he had how he performed surgery on me. And well, I'm thinking that hopefully that, you know, he'd perform uh, the surgery within two surgeries and I would look, you know, somewhat normal. Um, it would be like four or five surgeries later and I'm still. Told that I need another surgery, and at this time, I mean, surgeries are expensive. I don't have the money to keep going back and forth to the doctor. And I would live the right remainder after the last surgery that I was able to attend, trying to pretend like nothing was wrong with my face, trying to pretend like everything was okay. And it never was. It never was. I never was. I was never normal. I was never like everyone else. Um, I'd end up getting with several guys who would tell me that I was ugly and who would treat me like they didn't want to be seen with me in public. And yet I stayed there in a the relationship because I, I felt like they were right. I felt like I, I wasn't normal. Hiding behind computers to find relationships or just to feel connected to the world because I can always hide the side of my face and turn my face in a picture and post it on Facebook or somewhere like that. I'd hide my face and this side of my face and to hear the admiration and all that from people that would, that would uh, comment on how gorgeous I was. Knowing inside that they was only commenting on, on half of me, not all of me. 
feel like I've always lived my life as a half a person and, and the man with the half a face or the man with the half a life or that was always half. Never good enough. Never. I, I tried to build myself up and go back to school and, and become become something. I I I went to um, I went to I went on to get my MBA degree and get a bachelor's in psychology and worked in the substance abuse field, trying to help other people to get their life together because it seemed like mine was never going to change. It was going to always be the same. It was going to always be what it was. I don't, didn't have the money to, to fix my face, or fix my life. And allowing all kinds of things in my life, you know, things that I know that I shouldn't. Oh God, I would go through several attempts at suicide because I was sick of living like I, looking like I look and, and, and being like I am. That yeah, if people would always tell me that I, you can't really tell. I mean, you know, I mean, you look fine to me. But of course they'd say that because these are people that I'm close to and they're not going to tell me the truth. They're not going to tell me that that I'm ugly. They're not going to tell me that. I'd go through several relationships and, and, and always have my heart broken. Nobody really wanted to stay. Sometimes they'd meet me and when they first, when they meet me, of course I'm ugly, so then they would stay for a few minutes and they would leave and I'd never hear from them again. Always trying to go internal and say to myself that it's not me, it's them. But I know that it's me. I know that I'm, look at me. Y'all see my face? You see how I look? <sighs> trying to always, always trying to make my spirit and my personality bigger than my face and the way I look. But I can't avoid every time I look in the mirror, that's what I see. I see this ugly person. I see this, this man who just ugly. So I'd go from 17 years old to now I'm 40, from 49 years old. All my life is almost over. People knew what it's like to live like this. To live with a disease that you don't know why it happened to you or where it came from. It, it's, it hurts like hell. It hurts. And this is a pain that I, that I lay down with every night and I get up with it every night. No matter how I fix me, I can put on clothes and fancy clothes and beautiful things and buy beautiful things. And, but I have to look in the mirror every day. And when I do, I turn it right quickly because I don't want to see that. I come from a family of people who everybody, they talk about how attractive my family is. But I'm always that oddball. I'm always the one who sticks out, the one who <laughs> but I go out with friends and, and, and people are picking up, hitting on them and trying to get their number. They always look past me. They look past me because I'm ugly and because I, I don't look like they do. Oh God! So yeah, I lost I lost the weight. And now I'm now down to 180 pounds and still ugly. Still look in the mirror and I'm still ugly. I guess I'm telling this story today because I'm so sick of living like this. I'm so sick of being ugly. I'm so sick of being. A, feel like a lot of times I'm treated like second class because it can't can't be first class. I mean, look at me. Who would put me in first class, right? I'd be in a couple of relationships where they would tell me that to hide their face and keep from looking at me. That hurts like hell. It stinks. Oh my God, I think about everything I've done in my life and I've, I've tried to help people overcompensating by helping somebody else with their problems, trying to look past mine. And every day I'm faced with the reality of who I am, the reality of what I look like. Because I'm second class. Because I have Perry Romberg syndrome. 
it because it rules my life. And I try not to let it rule my life, but it rules my life. I get lonely so much. Uh, I get so lonely. The only reason why I'm still alive is because I love my mama and she loves me. And I know that she don't want anything to happen to me. I just, sometimes I lay down at night and I just wait for death to come in. And I not wake up the next morning. <laughs> I'm so sick of living like this. There's nothing out there. There's no resources. There's nothing to help me with me. There's nothing to help me with this. There's nothing. I'm alone and I walk alone. I've been alone. And yet it eats me up every day. Every day. I just want it to look normal. I just want it to be a whole person and not a half a person. I wanted to live a whole life and not a half a life. So every time I get sick, I always tie it to the repair at Romberg Syndrome and say, yeah, it just kind of fits with my life. That's the way it is. Look at my mouth crooked. Can you not see that? My mouth is crooked as hell. When I smile, it's an ugly smile. So many things in my life has been affected by Perry Romberg syndrome. So many things. I see the stories of other people. Other people who's got Perry Romberg syndrome. And how they're, they was able to have the finances to get it fixed. And they look normal. I've been working since I was 13 years old. And I've tried so hard. I went through the four or five surgeries. Hoping that the doctor would fix it. And I would look normal. I would look okay. I don't have to be gorgeous or beautiful or anything. I just wanted to look okay. I wanted to look normal. I've always accepted secondhand stuff because I don't deserve firsthand stuff. I see people telling their stories about their rare disorders and stuff like that and how cheerful they are and how happy they are. And for me, my story is not as glamorous. It's not as beautiful. This is my everyday struggle. This is my everyday. I decided to do this today because I'm sick of I'm sick of trying to pretend like it's okay because it's not. Uh, I'm, so many guys, so many love interests will hit on me because they see my pictures online, the half a face or the half of me. They'll hit on me and they want to meet me. Do you know how many times I've turned down? I've turned down offers of a relationship because of fear of what they're going to say when they meet me. <laughs> it's a rough life and it's just, I can't. It's just hard. It's hard. I don't know. I don't know where else to go and I don't know what else to do. And you can see where the Harry Rombergs came down here marked that side of my face down this way and it went down here and it drew my lip up. I look like a freak. I feel like I look like a monster because that's what I am. <laughs> just tired of living like this. I just, I wanted to tell somebody, I wanted to tell the world that deep inside God, I'm human, and I have, and I love, and I have a big heart. But that doesn't mean nothing, cause people can't see that. All they can see is the outside, and they judge you based on that. They judge you based on how you look. Nobody ever wants to get close enough, close enough to know the person inside of me. It's always about the outer shell, always. I just can't do it no more. It's, it's hard. Yes, the Perry Romberg syndrome has called, called a lot of mental disturbances sometimes in my head. It just. Sometimes I feel like I live to die. Because I don't understand why this happened to me. And where can I go to get it fixed? I've done research after research and nothing. Nothing. I'm left to wake up to me every morning. 
I had to tell somebody and I had to tell the world. I had to let it be known because one day I will lay down and death will come and it'll be the sweetest moment of my life. It will come. 